going. Welcome to Skype with Spike with your host, Spike Ron Santa. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Hey, how's everybody doing today? Welcome to Skype with Spike. I'm your host, Spike Von Shadow. Today, uh, I have a very special guest with me, and I have a very special topic today. Our topic today is we're going to be discussing Batman v Superman. You know, we're about a week and a half away from this wonderful, glorious event. And to celebrate that, uh, I have a very special guest today. A uh, good friend of mine and a well-known aficionado in all things comic, manga, and TV shows in the Facebook uh, comic community. Uh, a man by the name of Rashad Brown. He's a head admin of a group called Universes Collide TV. And he also has his own YouTube channel. So, let's welcome Rashad Brown. Rashad! Oh, I know, right? Like, the the, the hype is going to live up to the hype. I'm telling you. I'm telling mm -hmm. you. So, yeah, sure. and, and I'm really excited. And that, that's why I sent you that... that <laughs> I wanted you to look because... I've got some theories. I got some things I want to throw at you after watching all that. Okay. Okay. So let's start off with first. Um, how did you first get into Batman and Superman? You know, like early childhood stuff. Well, when I first got into it, I saw, like I said, I saw the uh, Superman animated series, and then like you know, I was interested in it, and I was just like, you know, I should start reading more comic books because I was like, I'm really into them. And with Batman, you know, I started reading it. I started looking at the Batman animated series, and I was like, ooh. I think, I oh, think that it was, was so good. Book. That was so good. Because the Batman animated series was 20 times better. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Batman animated series was great. I mean, just, just, just everything. And then, you know, and then the Superman animated series was good, but I thought that they could add a lot more to it. I, like, I kind of feel like, they didn't really scratch the Superman surface yet. And, you know, but, you know, it was a good show. So, you know, I'm not going to just, you know, just say it wasn't great. But, you know, I love those two. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I remember being a little kid for and first watching the original Batman, you know, the 60s TV show, you know, with all... <laughs> With Burt Ward and Adam West and all the crazy characters. and yeah. Like, that was, like, my first introduction to Batman. And then, it, you know, it's just kind of grown over the years and kind of grown on me. And Superman, you know, same type of thing. You know, I, I watched the Superman movies, um, the animated series a little bit here and there. And just kind of took yeah. it from there. And I, I think one of the uh, qualities about Batman that I always liked was the fact that he was just a normal guy that had a superior intellect, and he had all these gadgets, and he made the best out of it. And Superman was like, he was this foreigner, this alien from another planet, and he came here, and he got all these powers, and it was his ability to master those and, and use them in a positive way that I really thought was fascinating. So, exactly. So, now, let's talk about this Batman v Superman movie. All the trailers, all the things that we've seen so far. What are your predictions? What are your opinions on the movie? Well, well my opinion is that on the whole movie, I think that it's going to be great. But at the same time, you know, like I just hope that they do everything right. You know, like considering they want to add so many characters, like you know, it's like we all know the Flash and Cyborg are going to be in it. But you know, I even. Her, they're not even sure if they're going to add the Green Lantern. It's like, how you not going to add the Green Lantern? It's like, you're going to have to add him. He is part of the Justice League. You know, what also, you know, sticking with what you're saying, I'm just thinking about this. Maybe what they might do is get, like, the core members solidified at the end of Batman v Superman, and that's part of the fun of the Justice League movie. You know? <laughs>
of it, why, why would general justice cancel? Well, my first theory may be a bit far-fetched, but <laughs> I think that probably what happened was that the young Dutch creator probably had other projects to work on, or other people probably want the young Dutch creator to work on their projects, and they probably pushed it in the back burner. That's probably why season three probably didn't happen. Network will probably want to pay them the same amount of money that they paid them for the first two seasons. And the youngest creator was like, hey man, we want some awards, people love us, you gotta pay us something extra. Cartoon Network probably was like, hey man, we don't want y'all that much. And that's probably what happened. So tell me what y'all think. Y'all think that came down to Cartoon Network probably didn't want them? Or do y'all think that they, Young Justice, creator, and the cast probably were doing their own thing? Please subscribe, comment below. Thank y'all for listening. Bye. Now, back to what we were talking about. Um, so, like I was saying, what I think this is going to happen with this whole uh, Batman v Superman Justice League thing is, I think they're going to set like the core members in Batman v Superman, but show cameos to the other characters. Right. And then in, Justice, in the Justice League movie, they're going to have this big threat. Yeah, exactly. And then... It's going to be too much for them, and they're going to be like, hey, you know, you guys helped us out with this whole doomsday flying. Did you see that in that video I was showing you, those flying yeah. things? That's yeah. what I'm talking about. And what's going to happen is, in the Justice League movie, like, the core members are going to go and look for the rest of them. And because it's going to get to the point where it's so big that they can't handle it all, just the few of them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they're going to, yeah. because you know as well as I do in any of these, these comic book movies that when you have all these different characters, you have them there because you need them. There has to be this necessity. Exactly. So that's why I think that they're, that's how they're going to set it up. You know, another thing. I was watching that video last night, that nine minutes, and I started putting something together. This is how I think the movie is going to go. I think that Wonder Woman is going to be following Superman and Batman throughout this whole movie. You especially, you remember that point when Bruce met Clark yeah. at that thing, and then she got out of the car, and she was like looking over at him, and he was looking at her, and then that plane scene... So it's like yeah. she's been spying on them like this whole time. Exactly. So she knows that something's going on. And then mm -hmm. when Doomsday shows up, that's when she's like, ah! And then that's when they're like, dude, is she with you? And he's like, I don't know. I thought she was with you. Exactly. <laughs> so she'll be kind of like that background, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I, so I yeah like, that's when she finally will get her chance to shine and stuff like that. And you know, and like to be honest, like you know, like I am glad they finally gonna add Wonder Woman because, but you know, because she deserves to have her own movie too. Dude, but Gal she, Gadot is Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm, like they exactly. picked like the the perfect actress to play her. Yeah, they did because they did. because she's beautiful and you can take her seriously. Yeah. The the problem that they've had in the comic books and in in some of the other attempts to try to bring Wonder Woman to life is. They have one or the other. Either like yeah. she she's good on screen, but it's like you look at her and you're like, eh, I don't really want to look at that over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, that's that's reality, man. Exactly. And, and then you've had it the other way where you've had maybe a real hot one or someone that looked really beautiful, but it's like you really couldn't take them seriously. And I yeah. think I think they really struck a good balance with Gal Gadot. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then like, you know. It's just like, that's the thing. It's hard to find that balance. Like you say, you know, back in the day, it was really hard for them because, you know, it was like, you either get the beautiful one or you get the one to take seriously. And, you know, the beautiful one, it's like, yeah, I like her. But then when she transformed the Wonder Woman, it's like, uh, I can't take her seriously. Like yeah. She's like, one of the, like, like, I can like, see her whooping ass. Like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, now, you know, ha like, have, you seen, have you seen the previews for the Wonder Woman movie? Mm-hmm. And, like, the fight scenes in that she does really, really good. Mm -hmm. I, I was good. really, I was really impressed how they did it, how it looks, and, and how she performed on screen. You know, yeah. And and I think that's something really that in the comic book community that I really think we need more of better 
female characters. You know? Mm -hmm. I, I think one of the reasons why we don't get a lot of strong female movies like that is because of the fact that there's so many actresses out there that really can't be the blend of both that the fans need. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, I feel the same way. Like, I really do. Because it seems like that, you know, most of the actresses, you know, it's like the beauty part is like most of them are very beautiful. So that part's fine. But you have to have that serious side, too. And then sometimes, you know, like, you can tell that they're acting too hard. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's not like just natural with it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that's hard to find. Someone who's naturally, you know, serious and naturally could be beautiful. It's either one or the other. But hopefully, you know, like this will actually, you know, open up many doors for many other superheroes that we probably don't even know about. And super female villains. And see, like me, like me, for example, my, my opinion is like we have a Supergirl show on TV. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't entirely agree with that. Like, I think that there are a lot of better female characters that can really shine in their own show. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, we're going to continue this conversation here uh, in part two. I'm Spike Von Shadow. Thanks for joining us today on Skype with Spike with my very special guest, Rashad Brown from Universes right. Collide TV. Stay tuned for part two when we'll get deeper and deeper into this Batman v Superman thing. Stay tuned. All right. Welcome back to Skype the Spike on the Channel. Today, uh, we're continuing our discussion on Batman v Superman. Pros, cons, goods, and bads. With my very special guest, Rashad Brown. Welcome back, Rashad. Hey, glad to be back. Hey, we're glad to have you here, man. So, like we were talking in part one, we're talking about... The whole Wonder Woman, Supergirl, this whole female heroine thing, okay? Mm -hmm. And what I want to really, really wanted to go into uh, in, in this part of our, our interview, or in this part of our video, um, more into the characters and the overall mm -hmm. story that's going on. And like, like I was saying in, our, um, in part one, one of the things that disturbs me uh, on TV is this Supergirl TV show. Now, mm -hmm. because of the fact that we already have a Superman movie, we have this Superman, okay? Mm -hmm. And I feel like having a Supergirl show that you're undercutting, you know, the female character. Like, yeah. have a Vixen show. Have a Zatanna show. Dude, seriously, we need a Zatanna show. Yeah, yeah, we do need one. That's way overdue. Way, way overdue. Because I feel like we've already know the story of Superman. So yeah. by having a Supergirl show... We're, we're not really adding anything. Exactly. We're not really expanding the DC world. Like, I feel like that when it comes down to DC or just anything, and like, we're not expanding everything. It's like, it seems like it's kind of like, what's what I'm looking for? It's almost like it's it's not it's not surprising. Yeah. It's not like giving you that shock. We're not expanding wow. and, and exactly. growing. We're confining ourselves. Exactly. It's like we're so used to like, oh yeah, well they're gonna have a Supergirl show. Oh okay, let me guess what they gonna have now. They gonna have a Batgirl show. It's like you need to like surprise us, introduce us to some characters. We need to start going to, into new uncharted territories. Exactly, and like you said, you know, um, you know, like they need to, you know, get some other DC characters the time to shine. Like, there's so many other DC characters that they need to do. And do it right. Like, mm -hmm. don't just, don't do it half. Do it right. What the character was intended to be. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, like the way Marvel did Deadpool. You know? Like, mm -hmm. the way they did the Superman movie, the Man of Steel movie. You know? Yeah. Stuff like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I personally think, like, I, I don't know if you watch Arrow or not, but uh, yeah. I watch Arrow and Flash and Legends religiously. And a few weeks back, they had Vixen on there, dude. And, like, her character, not only was she a good character, a strong character, but she was beautiful. And, like, I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, kick off Laurel and Felicity on the show and replace her with Vixen? Like, Oliver Gilbert, a program, son. 
Like, they're not really doing anything to, to progress the team. Like, bring Vixen on the show. You know, give Vixen her own show instead of Supergirl. She was... She was a, I, I think that Vixen is such a more interesting character than mm-hmm. Supergirl. Exactly. The only thing they gave Vixen was her own animated show. That was the only thing close to the show that she got in that animated show. Yeah. And a lot of people are having trouble finding that too because I have a lot of people telling me, oh, we're the animated show. It's not on TV. It's like, why is it on TV yet? Yeah. But she's one of those characters and also Zatanna. Dude, Zatanna, you know the brilliant thing about Zatanna is you could create a Zatanna show and it would bring in that whole element of magic. You could bring in Constantine. You could bring in Dr. Fate. You could bring in Vixen and Shazam and all these like magic wielding characters. Mm-hmm. And it's like the other DC shows have opened up avenues to science, technology, metahumans, you know, uh, uh, mysticism and things like that. And it's like you could use this to open the doors to magic, you know. Exactly. But uh, we're, we're going to shift gears here. And um, one of the things that I think is go about Batman v Superman that's really going to destroy the box office is Ben Affleck is Batman. I think he's really taking such pride and passion in what he's doing. And mm-hmm. I really think he's going to end up being one of the best Batmans, if not the best Batman we've ever had. Exactly. What do you exactly. think? I think so too. And then, you know, like, I really do think that this is time for him to, like, redeem himself, especially, you know, after, you know, <clears throat> Daredevil. Daredevil. <laughs> But, you know, it, like, did that with a bad. It was okay. Dude, was the bad. way they did Bullseye in that movie was just, like, horrid. Like, yeah. he's just got, like, this indent in his head, like, <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. But, you know, but, man, I, but, you know, him playing um, Batman, I really do think that, like, I think he will play this role well. I already saw the trailers. I already love I already love the movie already. You know, I, I think... The beautiful thing about 2016, I think the beautiful thing about this time period that we're in is we're entering a time period where more and more actors are finding their niche. They're finding that superhero character that fits Mm -hmm. them perfectly. And I think that way with Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool, and I think that way with like Ben Affleck and Batman, Mm -hmm. and I think that way about like Henry Cavill is Superman. We're, We're entering this time period where I really think more and more and more we're finding these actors that fit these superhero roles more and more and more. And they're passionate about it. And they love doing it. And I think that that's part of the key to really nailing it on screen. Mm-hmm. What we find people that love, you know, I mean, I mean, I love it. Like you said, you know, uh, you know, that guy who played Deadpool, you know, when he played Green Lantern, that it just wasn't him. But when he played, <laughs> when he played Deadpool... <laughs> When he played Deadpool, it was actually like, he like he really enjoyed it. Like, it seemed like even he wanted to add some type of comments to his own thing. And he was excited for the second one. He's already pumped up for the second one. Why didn't Brown? I don't know. <laughs> it's the way shit is. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, Ben Affleck playing Batman. You know, I think that we're going to see him in many more Batman films. I agree. And I'll be very disappointed if he's not going to be in the Justice League. Dude, I movie... want to see a Ben Affleck Batman movie with Jared Leto as the Joker. I think that, that would be colossal. It would. It would be colossal. It would be the best. So, uh, so to uh, to you know to try to wrap up our our video our interview here today. Um, one of the things that I, I think is going to really make this movie good is all the little Easter eggs. All the little things. I, I feel like with this whole Batman v Superman thing, like they've been building this up and adding more and more and more and more to it. And I think that some movies, when they come out, they're like a like a grilled cheese sandwich. And I feel like we're going to get a Big Mac with this one, dude. Hey, yeah. And especially all cool the too. little things that they're adding to it. And they're really building this thing up. And especially watching that video last night, it was just, you, you, you start to see there's that there's going to be so much to this movie that, you know, there's probably tons of stuff that we haven't seen yet that they're that's probably in the movie, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. 
So, and especially with Doomsday. Can't wait to see him. Gosh. And the, and most people are already getting butt hurt about it, but it's like, this is only his first form. Like, exactly. this is only like Doomsday Part 1. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. I bet you they're going to put him down in that shaft like they did in the comic books, and then he's mm-hmm. going to crawl his way out, and that's when he's going to be all like bony and clawy yeah. crap. That's probably yeah. that's probably how he claws out. He probably gets mm-hmm. mad, and then all those things come out, and that's how he's able to pull himself out. You know exactly. So you know, people get Batman versus Superman. Look at that movie. Trust me, it's going to be good. And it's just like you know, don't 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 worry about how Doomsday looks like. You know, and not even his final form. <laughs> it's not even his final form. He's going to get even cooler. So don't worry. You know, I know. You know, it's just like there's a lot of misdirect. That's what they do. That's how they get you. Because right now, you're that's why Star about Wars it. Episode Seven did so good. Mm-hmm. We thought they were going this way, and they came from this way. You know, exactly, so. exactly. And this I'm is my no the same thing about Ben Affleck yeah. playing Batman. Now all of a sudden, so you know, y'all gonna love Doomsday too. So don't worry, I'll love it. Yeah, my prediction is uh, DC's gonna. Gonna grant in the next five years they're gonna grand slam the box office. Mm-hmm. I believe so too. Yeah, they've got a plan and they've been sitting in the cut waiting for Marvel to have their day. And now that's their time to shine. Exactly. Well, I want to thank my very special guest today, Rashad Brown from Universe Collide TV. Check out his Facebook and his YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us, today, Rashad. All right, thank you, guys. Be- I will see you.